welcome to the No More Late Fees podcast. I'm Jackie. And I'm Danielle. And we're just two best friends and ex-Blockbuster employees re-watching some of our favorite movies from the late 90s and early 2000s. And this week, we are watching The Babysitter's Club. It was released in 1995 and had a lot of up-and-coming stars, including Rachel Lee Cook, Skylar Fisk, Zelda Harris from Crooklyn, which <laughs> we did a couple of weeks ago, Larissa Olenek, Brie Blair, and Austin O'Brien. Ellen Burstyn plays the neighbor, the gardening neighbor, Marla, Marla Sokoloff. And Natanya Ross, who we just had on as a guest. So that's super exciting. Yes. And so it's a pretty straightforward plot. Seven friends (laughs) have a babysitter's club. (laughs) The the movie's based on the Anne M. Martin series of books, The Babysitter's Club. (laughs) And so the movie is set place in the summertime and the babysitter's club decide to start a day camp for all of the kiddos that they typically babysit. Well, 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 Jackie, let me tell you, I love this movie. So it's going to be interesting to see what, where we go from here. We were able to watch this movie on Amazon Prime. So if you want to rewatch and deep dive like we did, check it out there. And before we get started, you guys know the drill. We're going to do our ratings rewind. Before we start with any movie, we reveal the rating of our Y2K versions of ourselves would give. Then at the end, we'll see if our current selves agree with our initial rating. Our skill consists of would buy it, would buy it again. The best would play on repeat. Five day rental. Would watch again. Two day rental. It's just I. And same day rental. Trash, throw it in the trash can. (laughs) What was your rating? Y2K Jackie would give it a would buy it. I had it on VHS. Same. Y2K Danielle bought it, loved it, would buy it again, loved it. (laughs) (laughs) Especially since Zelda Harris was in it. And I was like, that my girl from Brooklyn. Yeah. But I appreciated the Babysitter's Club. I used to watch the the HBO series, Mm -hmm. which love it. And this movie. And I did watch the Netflix show. So whatever. I, uh, I have not watched the Netflix show. I need to. It's good. I liked it. And it's got Alicia Silverstone. So why not? Noise. All right. Let's get into it. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I do love about how the movie starts is if you obviously weren't a book reader, they definitely gave you the characteristics of every single Mm -hmm. member, which of course, I think the great thing about these books is that it gave girls an opportunity to find their their personality, their character, right? Yes, I Um, was a Marianne. (laughs) You know, I don't think I ever thought about what the characteristics were as a child. I just said, I'm the black girl, (laughs) Zelda. (laughs) <laughs> that was well it. she was a dancer so I mean yeah she did yeah she was it uh, happened to fit <laughs> it did it did fit <laughs> I did like that there is a lot of diversity in the characters of the babysitters club and the books always dealt with like real world issues yeah. like Stacy's a diabetic and her yeah. dealing with that Christy's mom just remarried and so it's a blended family like there were issues that were important to teenage girls at the time and for the asian american community claudia was and still is an icon um if you haven't watched the babysitter's club on netflix i highly recommend anybody watch it but there's also an accompaniment small documentary about the people who redid the um, series for netflix and about claudia and just her significance in literary culture and the mark she made but also just in pop culture yeah and watching the documentary it really does hit you like how significant just this character alone is you know well and she was not a stereotypical portrayal of an asian american she wasn't good at school she struggled with that because she was an amazing artist and so that's where her strengths lied in the struggle with her and her parents and that expectation 
And then she also had a really close relationship with her grandmother, which yeah. one of the books dealt with the passing of her grandmother. Yeah. And so she was a fresh look at what could have very easily been a very stereotypical Asian American character. I always appreciated, you know, and even just beyond the Asian American community, just being a child of an immigrant and being that first generation where you have your feet in both sides of the culture, where you're very much trying to fit in and be American Mm -hmm. and maybe not so much appreciating your culture at the time, because, you know, now I feel like it's just more embraced a a world culture view, but like growing up and having you know, your food and people saying it's smelly, or I just thought it was really cool how her character was portrayed and and you could see those, those layers to it. Yes. But let's get to the movie because it definitely, (laughs) it definitely doesn't really dive into that as much as the books and the TV shows. This movie is very, as much as the books are very well-rounded, I feel, as a collection. Mm-hmm. This movie is very surface. Like, yeah. we don't even create ripples <laughs> in the pond surface. <laughs> so the first thing I wrote was, hey, Troy is Jesse. And the second thing I wrote was, this is the most uneventful opening credits I've seen. Because <laughs> it's literally like just a blink almost like an entirely blank screen. They show calendar and kind of yeah. sketched in events and you hear parents calling to the yeah. babysitters, but oh my gosh, that thing drug on for a really it long time. It did. <laughs> there was no movement. My first line of notes is snow day, sissy space six daughter, tomboy control freak, Chrissy founder. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and was Christy wearing boxer shorts? I just need confirmation. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I not to here back. to judge, but I'm pretty sure when they show her like getting dressed, but they don't show her getting dressed. Yeah. I'm pretty sure she tucks her baseball tee into what looks like boxer shorts. So my question about Christy always was, was Christy just a tomboy or was this like code that Christy was going to be a lesbian later or is a lesbian I don't know I guess we could like research and and see what fan theory websites (laughs) have but she did I don't remember his name but she did have a boyfriend in the books yeah I mean I feel like the books are pretty liberal but I don't know if that was something they were able to actually and it was set in Connecticut which I don't know how how much you can dive into. I don't know about the Connecticut part, but I definitely (laughs) think about just the time frame. And it was a children's book. And I could see how, you know, how much they were going to push the boundaries of of really showing some real stuff. But I don't know if the newer books dive into any of those kind of. I don't know. Yeah. Anywho, the next thing I have is Stacy, shopper, diabetic, NYC. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> All of those are facts. <laughs> and then I thought about it. So they're supposed to be like, what, 13? Yes. Yeah. Well, I don't even know why I asked that because that becomes very important later. And I just like, who's shopping like this at 13? Right? Full on bags. And where is this money coming from? I feel I like Stacy is a caricature of what you would think of as, as a girl kid. that moved from Manhattan. Gotcha. Yeah, um, and I, I always thought that was weird as if the kids from Connecticut weren't probably even richer than right? the kids in New York. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it, it is, it's the, the five main girls who are all 13. It's Christy, the tomboy, Marianne, who's very shy. She has a boyfriend. She lived with her dad and then her dad met Don's mom and they eventually get married so then they become yeah so they become stepsisters so Christy is played by Skylar Fisk Marianne is played by Rachel Lee Cook in her first role Don is played by Larissa Olenek Stacy the New York girl spending money is played (laughs) by Brie Blair Mm -hmm. and then Claudia the artiste. The artiste is played by Trisha Joe in her first and only role after this. She quit. Oh, yes. And then there are two younger girls 
Mallory, who's a redhead and wants to write the next great American novel, it seems. <laughs> yeah, the um, junior members, the junior members. Correct. And then Jesse, who is a dancer. She's, yeah, Mallory's best friend. Yes. She doesn't bite her tongue. She's very sassy. Yes. So Jesse is played by Zelda Harris from Crooklyn. And then Mallory is played by Stacey Lynn Ramsauer. When they introduce Mallory, they go through all the girls. When she introduces Mallory, she goes and I think she goes, and then, or almost, and finally Mallory. And I was like, wait a minute. Like the way she describes Mallory Mm -hmm. is almost as if she was going, that was the last one. Yeah. And then she was like, and Mallory's best friend, Jesse. I was like, hold on, put some respect on her name. (laughs) Very mad. I feel like in the books, Jesse was the last one to join the group. She was. I feel like they used to babysit Mallory because she has a bunch of younger siblings yes and then when she turned 11 they invited her to be a junior member that's true I learned that from the new series yes you're welcome (laughs) I haven't touched one of those books in probably 30 years (laughs) I can tell you everything about them (laughs) Uh, so we start off and it is their meeting they meet Monday Wednesday and Friday and that's when parents know that they can call to set up reservations bookings yeah because Claudia is the coolest so it's at her house and she always has the best snacks and she's the only one with the phone yes she has a dedicated landline because this was pre-cell phone (laughs) so Uh, All the girls gather around the phone and they figure out who can babysit for all of like this entire Stony Brook community. We're introduced by name to Jackie Radowski. No one really likes to babysit him because he's accident prone. So he's kind of Christy's little buddy. Um, Stacy has a, a standing babysitting gig with Rosie um, on Wednesday nights and the mom calls just to let her know that a cousin's going to be there. Her little cut. And then she's like, her little cousin is visiting from Sweden. Yeah. And she says, I love little kids with accents. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and as they're having their meeting, Claudia is, they start talking about their summer. Mm -hmm. Claudia is very upset because she did not do well in science. And so now she has to go to summer school. And if she doesn't fail, if she fails, if she doesn't pass, she cannot be in the babysitter's club. And my favorite line, I think Mallory says it is, Claudia, you're an artist. You don't have to be a scientist. You still have to pass seventh grade. (laughs) (laughs) And... This affects all y'all bitches because <laughs> you hang out in her house, in her room, eat her snacks three times a week. Yeah. Where are you going to go? Mm-hmm. So then it cuts to Stacy showing up with her kid kit. If you don't know, a kid kit are these boxes they put together with lots of crafts and things for kids to do that they take with them on their babysitting gigs. So Stacy shows up with her kid kit to babysit Rosie and a little American flag for the little kid with an accent and <laughs> little cousin Luca. <laughs> so she meets Luca. Luca is not little. Udo. <laughs> Luca is 17. <laughs> what TV show was he on in the nineties? Because I used to think he was so fine. And uh, I remember he was on one of those like NBC in the morning, like not California dreams or saved by the bell, but one of them I'll find out, but I'll look it up right now. Oh, okay. Um, so she quickly backpedals. It was like, (laughs) Oh, I I just, I brought you this flag. Here you go. And then he's like, he was going to go out, which is why she still had to babysit Rosie. And he's like, nah, I'm going to stay in. And the mom still paid her. I have my whole life to go to the movies is what he said. I'm in love. (laughs) Love at first sight, Danielle. Yeah. Yeah. So they go walking around Stony Brook for like the small square footage that they have to walk around. Um, Yeah. So she is like, obviously in love at this point and he is 17 Mm -hmm. and she is 13 now I don't think she 
Like he doesn't ask how old she is. They just are smitten right away. Yeah. <laughs> he was I- on sliders. Sliders. That's really? like really the only thing I recognize. That's it? Yeah. I could have swore I saw him somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> okay. What happens after um um they they are then at another meeting. Christy sees this flyer for like a some sort of summer camp. And she and she has this brilliant idea <laughs> about starting a summer camp of their own because Christy is the idea man. Yes, she has um oh, I forgot what she called it. Well, Mallory said, Christy. This brilliant idea might brilliant be idea. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was just like, wait a minute. There's aren't there like all these regulations about having a summer camp? They did talk about permits and it was kind of a throwaway. Christy was like, oh, I checked. We don't need one of those. <laughs> okay. Also, where did they get the money to rent porta potties? Those aren't cheap. I feel like, let's just be honest. I feel like the parents 100% were bankrolling this operation. Probably. It kept the kids entertained. Most of the other parents had, they had multiples. There were mm-hmm. multiple children. So it's like, okay, they all could watch each other. And we're going to just, you know, have random key parties in the house <laughs> and get wasted and loaded. And, and they whatnot. hold the summer camp at Don and Marianne's house because they live in like this old farmhouse with lots of land. Yeah. But Don says, remember guys, remember the contract dad made us sign. <laughs> yes, the dad is a lawyer and he makes a contract. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> okay, dad. We'll sign the contract. And I think it was just stay out of the house and clean up after yourselves. Yeah. And probably if any kids get hurt, it's not my fucking responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Which think that's the you case. Can make, you can't make 13-year-olds sign a legally binding contract. <laughs> okay. I found out where Luca is from. Okay. I was wrong. He was on Saved by the Bell, but the new class. Oh, yes. He was. Okay. And that was going to drive me crazy. <laughs> and then oh, and then we're at a writing stable as one does with Marianne and Logan and doing, doing white people shit <laughs> I'm sorry let me take that back white rich Connecticut people shit that's rich rich kid shit <laughs> <laughs> sure sorry rich kid shit <laughs> Because black rich people are at the stables, of course. You never know. <laughs> I can't, you know what? I can't joke about it because we actually did go horse riding in camp. Oh, I never went to camp, Danielle. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so we're, we're introduced to Marianne's hottie of a boyfriend, hot piece of man meat, Austin O'Brien, who plays Logan. Who I freaking love well I'll say love because I don't know what he's up to now but I was obsessed I was obsessed I watched my girl too so many times because of him (sighs) that's all (laughs) that that's all I gotta say and then we are also introduced to the bad girls club I was gonna (laughs) just say that (laughs) Um, yes it is Koki Mason played by Marla Sokloff Natanya Ross, who plays Grace, and then Ashley Turner, who plays BB. BB. Never saw that one coming. Yeah. Yeah. So they're like her sidekicks. Koki is on another level. She is on the track to be the next Taylor Vaughn. Yes. She is 1000% petty. <laughs> <laughs> and she will get her man. I mean, mm-hmm. the way that she completely disregarded, disrespected Marianne's relationship was savage as fuck. She, Koki Mason is a stalker. Dude. <laughs> she is. She like Logan has said, trees. no ma'am. Marianne has said, stay away from my man. And Koki's like, 
NASA. But here's the question. Did Logan say no, ma'am? Because I saw smiles. I saw that's he's cool. from Kentucky, so he's polite. Whatever. He was feeling it. At one point in the movie, she touches his muscles. He smiles. Marianne gives him a look like the fuck. And he <laughs> just takes his hands and puts it up and be like, well, and then walks the fuck away. He don't care. He loves the attention. But he did not say no to those smashing pumpkin tickets. <laughs> he did it. He didn't say, you know what? He didn't pull her aside and say, this shit got to stop. I got a girl. Yeah. You you need to stop. So he was a he was a co-conspirator in this. <laughs> And side note, Cokie Mason's real name is Marguerite. Oh, who would have thought? Oh, yeah, they say it in the movie. Yeah, the movie. and Ken goes, why does she hate it? It's such a pretty name. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like when you have longer names in, in elementary school, it's just so easy to make fun of. And But yeah. I don't know if Cokie is a better name. <laughs> That's a choice. <laughs> <laughs> apparently she was fully committed to that choice but it was a choice to be called Koki. i wasn't completely mad at her because she calls them a band of goody two shoes and i agree yeah they're like not wrong I, yeah they're just she's cutting. but she, she's just salty that marianne got her man i would be mad too because marianne was real basic she was wearing like whatever just walked out of the gap or Abercrombie that's what that bitch was wearing she had the sweater vest on the khaki skirt, and (laughs) that that bob it was the most basic situation I've ever seen oh well and then you have the other end of the spectrum where Koki Mason was one step below Phoebe (laughs) in her fashion choices (laughs) there were knee highs there were some platform Mary Janes. There were a lot of like skirt overalls over pastel shirts. Yeah. And knee highs. Her hair was in pigtails quite a bit of the time. Too much. Yeah. It was. And the the three girls all kind of, they were in the same fashion wheelhouse always like they weren't matchy matchy yeah but their outfits always had a cohesive statement yeah it I mean I felt like their outfits could have just they could have been in clueless and it wouldn't have Mm -hmm. been a problem it was one shirt that I also recognized but it wasn't them wearing it it was actually Claudia which I feel like Claudia's outfits did not give off the vibes that she should have right with how creative she was Mm -hmm. in the books but she did wear the shirt that Ty wore and Clueless so I was like I know that shirt (laughs) why do I know that shirt Um, so we see the gang hanging out at I don't know a diner can we talk about how the bad girls club has their own theme music because we hear the theme music of the babysitters club throughout but when the bad girls club comes rolling through you hear let's get busy (laughs) That's how we know that yeah. they're here. I appreciated that. I'm just, <laughs> okay. But yes, now we're at the diner. Koki's in her roller skates for Ugh. some reason. How are they allowed in with roller skates is what <laughs> I wanted out. I don't know. So Koki comes in, makes some snide comments, and then goes and sits at the counter. Yeah, she does a drive-by <laughs> of making fun. But when, of course, Christy comes up to take care of business <laughs> and invites them to a secret party that they're having. And this shows that Koki secretly just wants to be included. included. Yeah. So, you know. Hold on. They- and as Christy's inviting them, Mallory and Jesse walk up behind her. Yeah, and they're like, <laughs> what's she doing? What's she doing? And Christy literally like shoves them out of the way and out of frame so that she can come up with this diabolical scheme. <laughs> and they're like, what party? What's she talking about, Christy? What party? We're not having a party. And she's like, bitch, get out of here. You're ruining plan. <laughs> I thought they came up as backup. I mean, I don't know what Mallory was gonna do, but she seems spunky enough that she could. She take did. A yeah. And Jesse was just confused. <laughs> <laughs> so 
so the bad girls club shows up the next day at the assigned location and time <laughs> and the sprinklers come on so uh, apparently christy <laughs> knows the country club sprinkler schedule to ensure that they would be there at the right time for the sprinklers. I just didn't understand how they didn't hear it. Cause like everyone knows what sprinklers sound like when they're about to turn on, you have yeah. at least a good five second seconds. window. Yeah. But seconds. they were, but they were in the middle of a field. So chances <laughs> them, them running and getting away from the water are probably slim to none. Yeah. So then we see the first day of Danielle. <laughs> They pinned potholders to the children. <laughs> Why? Why would you choose potholders as the thing to identify which group the children will be in? I and they tried don't. to justify it. <laughs> hey, share it with a neighbor, share it with a friend. You can use it for dinner or cooking in the kitchen. <laughs> what? <laughs> what i want to know if that was true to the books or did some dumbass producer say what can we use for this scene and someone said <laughs> i got it <laughs> pot holders <laughs> and they're just safety pinning them them bitches are gonna tear off put holes in clothes kids <laughs> are gonna get stabbed with safety pins Kids are not gentle and they're not going to be like, oh, oh, wait, we can't wrestle my pot holder. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I, I noticed that. But I also spotted a baby Kyla Pratt in um, playing one of the, the campers from Proud Family and uh, Dr. Doolittle with Eddie Murphy. She played the daughter. And did um, you there was also Scarlett Palmers who played Reba's daughter in the tv show reba she was on star oh. trek she plays Susie barrett so the, the teeny tiny redhead with the ringlets yeah. like the rest of her hair was straight but she had weird ringlets in the front and then apparently a couple of kevin costner's kids were in it what i don't oh it was the girl and the sister that was like wouldn't talk oh there were sisters in real life yeah annie and lily costner and it said that a lot of the parents of some of the actors would come to the set because it was such a fun set to be on. Mm -hmm. And Kevin Costner showed up on set se several times as his children were actors in the film. That's interesting. Yeah. So after they're having their first day, they, <laughs> of course, the porty potties didn't come in on time. So they have to use the house. So they break a rule already. And Susie is shaving. <laughs> <laughs> Susie is unique she is yeah. a special soul <laughs> she she's using at first it's like oh my god is that a real like razor, blade? razor yeah but it was uh she was using a a comb <laughs> <laughs> and as they're in taking these children without parents it's just a bunch of kids holding checks right <laughs> uh, it is a very loose summer camp system i feel i would be I mean, I guess they had already built up enough relationships trust with and, parents. Yeah. The haggling cowboy comes <laughs> up. There is this kid who is no more than five or six and his tiny baby sister, who is maybe two or three. And he goes into this long spiel about how his mom was wondering if they could just watch the two of them for the price of one because the sister's so little and she's not really a problem. Yeah, she like, is. She's the one he, who's shaving. He, <laughs> but he sold it. Like he yeah. was, he was ready to make a deal. And he's, he, he locked that deal down because they agreed. It was partly him and also the part of the girls not being financially business savvy as yeah. we learn later down the line. <laughs> Cause I would have been like, you better go tell your mama to go get your sister a check. I'll give you half off, but I'm not taking this little brat for no money. Yeah. And then this is also when we meet a friend of Logan's. His Alan. Name is Alan. <laughs> I don't, I can't figure Alan out. <laughs> he seems underneath everything, a sweet boy that just wants to be loved. Yeah. But the shit he does that is baffling. It's bad shit crazy. It's borderline <laughs> insane. It really is. 
because he, he's just spazzes out randomly. And he's always wearing pants that are too big and suspenders. And Ken asked, is Alan Amish? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the best way to describe Alan, his style is to say he's alfalfa all grown up in yes. high school without his hair sticking up. Yeah. That's it. I like that. With magic tricks. I just noticed the only person you can see in your background is Alan. <laughs> <laughs> he's looking at you lovingly. I didn't tell you that's my boy. That's my new boo. I mean, he was really cute. Yeah, he was. He just... Weird. He, he had no social skills. Was he in a movie with Larissa Alnick? Like, I feel like, was he in that m- movie with Sissy Spacek and they like wish their mom away? I'll look it up. Okay. Anywho. So yeah, we meet David and of course he's obsessed and in love with Don. Alan. Who did I say? David. Who the hell's David? David Michael is Christy's little brother. Let me start over. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of names in this movie and a lot of characters with two names. It's hard to keep straight. So we meet Alan. After we meet Alan, we realize he's in love, obsessed with Dawn. And she ain't having it. No. Uh, Side note about Dawn. She's always eating. Yeah. And she's always pushing, like it was almost like a running joke in the movie that she always had something super healthy and like, Californian. She was always yeah. eating like tahini and seeds and all sorts of stuff. But in every scene, she was eating something or offering the girls something healthy to eat. Anywho. <laughs> then we see Christy is arriving back home after her hard day of work. And there is a van camper parked outside her house and her daddy jumps out <laughs> who she hasn't it seems like she hasn't seen in a long time and this man breaks cardinal rule number one he asks a child to keep a secret from mm. her parents no sir Mm-mm. no sir and because she so wants his love and attention she agrees to it because she's fucking 13 yeah it could have been any predator her dad was a predator he just seemed like he was flaky and in it for not even in it for himself but he had his fun and he was moving on yeah he so when i remember originally watching this movie and i did like a lot of the shit that Christy did in this movie was just annoying as shit, even when I was younger. She was but a shit friend. Yeah, she was very confused. You know, and that stays pretty true to form even in the the TV show that she's just, she doesn't want things to change. She's a control mm-hmm. freak. She could be an, a little bit of an ass. But for me growing up watching that, that dynamic with her dad, I, I could feel that I- I definitely commiserated with that Mm -hmm. because my dad, you know, would kind of pop in and pop out whenever he felt like it. And those moments where, you know, the promises that he would come for a visit or he would do something and then break them. I felt that heartache. And I also felt the, you would literally do anything because you kind of internalize that the reason that this parent is not being consistent or being there for you in the way that you want you take on the responsibility as if it's something you're doing or that you have you know you want to fix it it's not till you get older that you realize that your parents are well and as people with problems and he knew that her mom wasn't going to put up with the bullshit which is why he asked her to keep the secret and not tell her mom that he was there yeah so like uh, he was manipulating the whole time. He yeah. knew his ass was not going to stay. Nope. And he was there for a good time, not a long time. And he was going to peace out when it didn't service his agenda anymore. Yeah. A hundred percent. It, it's sad that so many people have that, <laughs> that happen with their parents just. Yeah. And then we see a sleepover that's just Christy and Marianne. 
And Christy tells Marianne, hey, my dad's in town. Yeah, because Chris, uh, Christy and, and Marianne are best friends. Even though Marianne yes. and Don are stepsisters, it's always been established that before they even met, mm-hmm. Christy and Marianne are best friends. And Marianne is wearing a very lovely <laughs> muumu as <laughs> her <laughs> nightgown. <laughs> Don't mock a muumu. I love a muumu. <laughs> I just said a very lovely muumu, but it is on a 13 year old. I, you know, we used to all wear those long ass night, night gowns, old lady night gowns. Danielle, this had a collar on it. <laughs> I, I, tried. I tried. I tried. And then we see another interaction between Koki and Marianne and Logan. Koki, this is the scene where she squeezes his bicep. Mm-hmm. She also says, Logan, I like your jeans. Nice fit. Ooh. She she trying to be hot ass at 13, just like Stacy. Stacy and her are in the same club. And then uh, she says, mm, nice muscle. I can't. I wrote, <laughs> I wrote, Koki gave zero fucks about Marianne. Yep. Then they stumble upon question mark a greenhouse. <laughs> oh, okay. So at this point, Chrissy keeps flaking off on everybody. Yeah. She supp- she promised to help Claudia with studying for her test for science. But I kind of like I a hundred percent agreed with the girls why they were mad because she's a shitty friend in in this instance. But also, I felt like Claudia was real whiny about that shit. There's like five other people who offered to help you study. So yeah. like, so Claudia's mad that Christy, Christy is not helping out and she's also leaving early from camp and putting, you know, her responsibilities on everyone else. But as Claudia and I think Stacy are walking through randomly some meadow or something, they, they stumble, like you said, stumble upon this abandoned. And it was about this point that I noticed the really abrupt fade to black transitions <laughs> i was like is my tv glitching what's going on and then it would just be the next thing i'm like who chose these shitty ass transitions between scenes and there was no it never felt like okay the scene ended and so a transition would make sense it was very jarring as a viewer a viewer with a film degree because <laughs> i clearly did not pay attention <laughs> <laughs> sorry Then they show it's starting to become more chaotic at the camp because Christy continually is leaving early and there's a a time out booth and you have to, if you're put in time out, you have to sit for as many minutes as your age. I love when the little girls, like when they, they're like, how old are you? And she's like, she say four Four and a half. And she's like, then you sit for four minutes. I meant I'm two. (laughs) I just thought that was funny. And so you see, and if I, if I, as a restaurant owner, saw a group of seven teenage girls come in, young teenage girls, I'm like, do they have money? Are they going to order all this fucking food and then walk out? Well, Christy told, Christy said that one of the greatest things that she loved was that the the burgers there never changed. So I feel like they were regulars. Probably. They were used to it by now. More and more kids are just shoved in this tiny box that's the timeout booth. They paint the picture that it is chaotic without Christy. She keeps shit together. Yeah, and sometimes the girls would just be like, three of them would be just talking to each other. I'm like, who's watching the kids? The children. Yeah. yeah. And then now is the the hike. So Luca and Stacy go on a hike. Mm -hmm. Stacy's trying to hide the fact that she has diabetes from Luca because she doesn't want to feel like she has an affliction and her (laughs) mom is like bitch you have to eat you know you have to eat or your blood sugar LBS let's rewind okay mom is helping prepare her 13 year old daughter to go on a hike with some boy she's never met before Mm -hmm. and then meets said boy and doesn't say 
how old is this motherfucker at my door? Mm. He looks like a grown man. So Stacy is not just hiding her di- her diabetes, her betis. She is also hiding her age. Her age. And then if you were really trying to hide your diabetes, why not eat? Right. So you don't have any issues. Right. Because you know what's, it's not like it's a surprise. You or know pack what's a happen. snack. Yeah. Like a snack is not going to immediately set alarm bells off in his head. Right. And I don't know what he, clearly, if you ever see this girl, you know, she's not a hiking type of person. Yeah. So that, yeah, that was all super weird. And I just don't understand why he never said, Hey, how old are you? Ever. Ever. That that we see, I feel like she had told him. No, she never, I, she just, I think she was avoiding. I don't think she lied because. I think he just assumed. I really think he assumed because he would have, I think he would have yelled at her that she lied. I think yeah. he just assumed that she was 16. Yeah. And then Penny. her friends are not saying, um, he's he's 17. I don't no, think he's, he's hot, you. Danielle. <laughs> God. So they're like, go Stacy. Good job. <laughs> okay. They're hiking and she, she gets faint and she falls. <laughs> I don't laugh at that because I, I definitely know what that can be like. My dad was a diabetic mm-hmm. and it is a very scary thing when their sugar is out of control. But it's drops. not just, I need a snack and okay, I'm fine. When your body goes through that kind of sudden drop, you need recovery time. She was not walking out of there anytime soon right. without assistance. But it was like he he gave her a snack and then she explained her whole diabetes and then it, she was fine. Yeah, and the, the other thing is sometimes a snack, it, it is not just going to help. It has mm-hmm. to be certain things. She might've needed candy or orange juice mm-hmm. to really spike it fast because yep. what with regular food it will take a while for it to turn into glucose for you yeah so yeah i'm sure they didn't get a, a medical consultant about this so. <laughs> they didn't do their their okay. diabetes research before <laughs> putting this scene in and no. he's like why didn't you just tell like yeah. it's fine <laughs> that's Idiot not what you girl. should that's the thing you don't have to hide that's true <sighs> So then we are back at Christy's house. She's making a shit ton of food, peanut butter and banana sandwiches, her favorite. So essentially she's stealing food from her house (laughs) to go feed her dead. Her grown grown ass deadbeat. Yes. I literally wrote in my my notes, deadbeat dad alert. Yeah. (laughs) And her mom's like, hey, what's up? Can I help you? Can I do this? And she's, Christy's pretty much like, don't fucking talk to me. I got to go. Peace. How many kids do they have in that house? They have a lot. I don't remember off the top of my head, but he had a couple, Christy's biological brother is David Michael. And then the youngest is Emily Michelle, who they adopted together. So I want to say there's maybe five altogether because Christy has a couple of older step siblings. I thought, yeah, I thought he had three boys. Yeah. Okay. Um, They don't mention in the movies. It's just from my previous watchings of other things. Yeah. Only the younger ones are mentioned. Yeah. And now we are back to. So then we see another day at camp. There's lots of quick days at camp. Yeah. (laughs) This particular day, Alan is impressing Don with his magic tricks. Which she is actually kind of, she's, um, she is intrigued. She's intrigued. Yes. One of her, one of that. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And then doing that. We cut to Marianne and Don are hanging out together in a room that is like head to toe Americana. America. (laughs) America. The couch is red, white, and blue striped plaid. But it felt so 90s. I had yes. a rush of feeling because your mom used to have some pillows similar to that. Yes. Like, yeah. And the blue couch. Yeah. I remember the blue couch. Yeah. 
it was very American. I, I just wrote the American room. <laughs> and so Don's like, what is up with Christy? Why is she acting like this? Why is she flaking on all her responsibilities? And Marianne's just like, I'll never tell. tell. <laughs> it's a secret, I promise. I promise. <laughs> And Don's like, bitch, we're sisters. And and Marianne's like, I'm a ride or die. And Christy was here before you were. So <laughs> no, she's saying shit. She actually, I, I feel like it was even harsher because she, <laughs> she's like, I promised her. She's like, please don't be mad at me. Well, then make her your sister. Or some crazy shit. I was like, yeah. damn. Don has Don with zero the deep chuds. <laughs> yeah. And then the next day at camp, it's the end of the day. Christy has left early to go meet her dad and shoot hoops or play basketball or whatever the hell they're doing. I thought they were playing baseball. Yeah. (laughs) Danielle, all of the time with her dad (laughs) blends together for me. And is this where she's wearing the dress? dress? He bought her a dress, so obviously he doesn't know her at all at all (laughs) but she wears the dress to make him happy and she's like playing baseball with him in a field wearing the dress and so we we cut back to the camp it's hectic again because they're down a supervisor and david michael christy's little brother is like where's christy it's time to go home and don's like oh i'm gonna help you hold on but then gets distracted by another kid so david michael's like I'm, I'm just gonna walk home by myself he's maybe seven or eight I mean there's so many scenes in this movie where it was like a precurse to how to catch a predator these yeah. kids were ready and waiting to be snatched yeah I used to take Serena and Christian out to the amusement parks I would always say don't get snatched they were just out there to be for the picking it's yep. scary So Christy gets home. She's euphoric after spending this day with her dad again. And she walks in and her mom's like, you're in trouble. Where the fuck were you? Yeah. (laughs) And she's like, oh, it's just, oh, I'm sorry. And yeah, like, and how long was the leash for these 13 year olds that they can roll in when it's dark outside? Everyone knows the rules. You get your ass in this house before the streetlights come on. Yep. And her mom's like, you straight up forgot your brother and tried to walk home by himself. Luckily, one of your friend's parents found him and brought him home. And Chrissy was like, man, he knows the way. (laughs) I feel like that would have been a response you had for poor Johnny walking the streets. (sighs) I cannot confirm or deny that statement. (laughs) Poor Johnny. I love you, Johnny. I love my Johnny, but yeah, (laughs) I always went to pick him up in a car or my bicycle from elementary school. I never let him walk home alone if mom wasn't home. So there. That's true. You were a good sister at times. (laughs) At times. (laughs) (laughs) And so then Watson, Christy's stepfather comes down and is like, what is up with you? what is going on and she just keeps saying you don't understand you don't understand and then as soon as he's like get back here I'm your father she laid the you're not my father yeah Um, I I love to call this this is the classic you're not my real daddy slam yes I I tried that once with my stepdad and he was like yeah I'm glad I'm not yeah (laughs) that's why that's why he's not here no more Mm -hmm. so the next day at camp alan's still trying to impress don he has done it i can't remember what he does and he celebrates danielle by flapping his wings and cawing like a bird it makes me fly he says (laughs) What is happening? (laughs) Episode, does he need, does he need a snack? (laughs) He does not know how to talk to a girl and he let his nerves hit him real hard. And he doesn't fear letting his freak flag fly. 
this is true, but Don's freak flag is not the same as Alan's freak flag. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and then Chrissy is starting to try and make amends with all of her friends because she's recognizing she's fucked up. The rap and concert. Danielle. <laughs> so Claudia has a big <laughs> test. <laughs> it has a big test on the human body and Chrissy's like we're gonna help you with our bodies and I'm like I don't know what that means <laughs> doesn't sound great when I tell you they created a rap about the human body the and brain, then tried the brain. <laughs> center of the chain the brain the brain the center of the chain <laughs> and they were trying to beatbox no the air oh. was so dry it was <laughs> so dry like did y'all take a sip of water or something like jesus <laughs> <laughs> it's like they were coughing up dust <laughs> also i'm pretty sure if i created a rap for you to help you study you would like I didn't hear any of that. What was that? I was too distracted <laughs> by you with no rhythm trying to rap. <laughs> I think I would have, out of respect, stared at you and tried to listen. And then I would have been like, don't ever in your life do that again. So needless to say, the the rap was that stellar but it did its job it was an earworm for claudia <laughs> once she heard the pencil on the table yeah someone else was tapping the pencil and she's like oh yeah <laughs> feel that beat and then she was able to replay the rap in her brain and she got a b minus in science and passed so she could stay in the babysitter's club mission accomplished they were into it there was choreography oh child i did write the brain the brain the center of the chain as i watched that scene i was like oh gosh this is what we're talking about tomorrow is that fucking scene and all the little kids are like yeah yeah get in it get on it i bet kyla pratt was sitting in her little chair like mm -mm. was jesse up there i don't think so i think she was sitting with the kids i'm like you didn't incorporate the dancer for this jesse said i'm gonna let these white people flop on their own <laughs> <laughs> i don't want my name anywhere near this <laughs> atrocities of crime crime against humanity so after that, they give Claudia all their lucky stuff to take the test. I don't know. It's so, so bizarre. And then Christy, it's back at Christy's house again. This movie is all over the place. We never mm -hmm. stay in one location too long. Mm -mm. So now we're back at Christy's house. Dad calls her on the phone or she calls him or no, she calls and he has checked out of his hotel room and so he's essentially abandoned her again she's sitting there crying and watson is trying to like console her and ask her what's wrong and she just keeps screaming i have an allergy just one an allergy <laughs> she's like it's an allergy it's an allergy it's an allergy and runs away <laughs> And the other part about it is like when she was on the phone with her dad, you could clearly hear as a grown ass man, the, the stepdad would have been like, who yeah. the fuck are you talking to? Yeah. And you're asking for a hotel room. See, I don't know. Then cut to downtown Manhattan. No, before that happens, she tells the group that she got a B. Yes. Because at this point they are still trying to fix up the greenhouse. And so Claudia 
everyone's really excited. Even Mallory's like, this is the end of us if she don't make it. There's yeah. real high stakes here. There was a point where Stacy's new boyfriend, Luca, has invited her to come see him and his band play in New York City. And mm, of course her parents agree to the 13-year-old going to see well, the grown ass man from the city she 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 knows she knows what to do it's fine she goes to go stay with her dad in the city yeah. are they divorced i don't remember and the contingency is that claudia only claudia can come mm-hmm. and claudia's like oh well I, I have my test and it'll be she's like oh don't worry it's after your test so those two go on a journey of the lifetime to go see because the they're BFFs. Man. yes they're bffs but I just had so many questions. The dad met Luca and I'm like, your daughter is 13. This European full grown ass man is 17, which by the way, I couldn't even believe that shit because you know, in real life, he was older than 17. He was 23. Get get the fuck out of here. Oh, I can't. So yes, now we're in New York. And so they take... A taxi to Luca's venue, I guess. And I don't know what kind of club it is where you only have to be 16. It was a teen club. Oh, okay. Yeah, they said a teen club. I mean, if it's teen, then if you're 13, you should have been able to get in. But <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Uh, before we got to this quote unquote teen club and I made a fool of my fucking self, I'd have been asking questions like, how old do you have to be to get in? You know? But you wait till you get to the door to to be found out that you are 13. And she's like, oh, um, I must have left left my ID at home. I don't have it. And then the bitch Luca's with, which why wasn't she asking questions about who this other bitch he brought to the club was? (laughs) This bitch goes, oh, no, there's your ID right there snatches it out of Stacy's wallet and hands mm. it to the guy and the guy's like yeah uh she's only 13 and then Luca freaks the fuck out as he should but yeah. I want to say that he was putting on a performance with this act because you didn't ask later down questions. the line yeah yeah so yeah he's going off in the taxi she's embarrassed and then she has the nerve to get mad bitch you've been out here with a grown man but you know mm-hmm. what I'm not mad at you because you're a child. I'm mad at the two horrible parents you have and this grown ass man. Yep. And Claudia is just sitting there like, uh, <laughs> I passed my test. <laughs> but Stacy was boy crazy in those books. Mm-hmm. There is a book called Boy Crazy Stacy. Yes, there's an episode <laughs> on the, the new show with that Uh, so then we transition back to the camp again and side note that christy's birthday is coming up soon and Mm -hmm. mallory's parents have a cabin out in the woods and they have agreed to let the girls have a birthday party for her at this said house when the family goes together yeah okay and so we're back at camp and all summer long the neighbor played by Ella Burstyn, Miss Haberman, has been trying to be very patient. She just wants to garden and be left alone. There has been a stink bomb that has been thrown and goes off in her yard. Mm -hmm. Just obnoxious children all day, every day. Next So loud. The moment she snaps is when these children who are, again, not supervised, because how Mm -hmm. did they get into this lady's yard? have pulled up all of her prized snapdragons that she grew from seeds, which (laughs) I would be mad because I grew one avocado tree Mm -hmm. and I was like my pride and joy because I'm like, I grew you from a seed and now you were big. So I would be pissed too. And since it's Don's neighbor, Don goes over and brings her her herbs she grew. (laughs) I mean, the only herb that you could have brought me that I would have maybe calmed the fuck down was none of the herbs she brought over. (laughs) Dawn talks to her and I feel like Miss Haberman is not 
unreasonable in any stretch of the imagination. She's just like, I've been trying to be patient, but this is the last straw and y'all need to get it together. Her and Dawn kind of come to an understanding and like a camaraderie type thing. And Miss Haberman tells Dawn, you're almost delightful. (laughs) (laughs) But you also get a feeling that when you go in her house, that she's really traveled, that she's really passionate. It's almost like maybe an older version of what Dawn might turn into. Mm -hmm. So they're kindred spirits. uh, For sure. Yeah. So then it's Christy's birthday party. They're all sitting around waiting for her. She sees her dad before her birthday and he wants to take her for dinner and take her to this amusement park that they used to go to. But Christy's had a, enough. All mm-hmm. her, She's like, I, all the people that really care about me. I think all the things that she was feeling before about how her dad has kind of just abandoned her all these mm-hmm. years and hasn't shown up and she's had enough. All the people who have been there for me, the people who really love me and care for me are mad at me because I'm keeping a secret from the person who doesn't call or message me or send me letters or or anything. And you're asking me to lie. Like, I, I don't think it's okay. I don't feel right lying about my mom. She like really gives it to him. So he says that for her birthday, he's going to come to the house. He's going to meet with her mom. He's going to pick her up and everything's going to be okay. And so she kind of backs down. Mm -hmm. So now it's her birthday. She called, this is, I think when she calls the hotel and finds out that he checked out, I think the last time when she was on the phone, it was just her talking to her dad and her being upset that everyone's mad at her for lying. And so now she's really upset. And I just don't know what the thought process here is. So she knows that he's checked out. She can't find him. I would have imagined that maybe she sat at the house waiting for him to show up and he doesn't, but instead Mm -hmm. she decides to get dressed and go to this amusement park anyways. He's not there, Avi. Right. Why wouldn't it start raining? And she hears the rain coming and there's Mm -hmm. no panic to let me get out of here. They even say because of the storm before Mm -hmm. it hits, they're going to close the ride. I don't know why she goes there. And maybe she thinks her dad just said, oh, I'm just going to go there, even though I should be picking. Like, did he yeah. did she think he was going to pick her? I don't know. And then <laughs> the whole park shuts down and they lock her inside the park. She has to jump the fence to get out. But when she, she gets to a payphone and she doesn't call her parents, she calls the cabin where Mallory's at. There are times when you, you hide things from your parents, but then... You know, you you do, you admit defeat and you're like, I'm in a real scary situation. I need to call home. But I call Mallory. And then and, and all of her friends are sitting around waiting for Christy because it's her fucking birthday. And instead, she's at the amusement park looking for her dad. Then someone goes, why is the cake melting? And they all look at Mallory. <laughs> she's like, I bought an, an ice cream cake. What is it? And so uh, they have to try and figure out how to go get Christy. And uh, and Stacey's like, well, I know someone who drives. And then she gets on her knees as if she's about to pray. And she's so hesitant to do it. She doesn't really. And Luca, by the way, has been calling her nonstop, mm-hmm. playing his harmonica outside their house. Oh, that harmonica. I forgot. And then the mom's like, oh, he seems like he feels so bad. He's 17. <laughs> somebody hear me please (laughs) so she decides to call Luca yet another chance to call an adult Mm -hmm. oh well I guess she I guess she recognizes he's an adult now well because Marianne finally spills the beans on Christy's situation (laughs) and she's like so we can't tell any adults so now she has everyone lying for her essentially Uh oh I can't even (laughs) <laughs> it gives me it's giving me heartburn just <laughs> going through this I think if I have kids I'm going to sit down and watch this movie and just say this is what you don't do these are all the things you don't do yes exactly so Christy gets home and the next day she comes clean to her mom and her mom's like I'm really mad at him for making 
you feel obligated to lie to me. I'm upset that you lied to me, but I'm really more upset with him than I am with you type thing. And then she says, this letter came for you. And it's a letter from her dad pretty much saying, sorry, but I pieced out. Sorry, not sorry. <sighs> and it was the shortest little letter too. I mean, what a piece of shit. And meanwhile, while they're having Christie's birthday without her, uh, <laughs> the bad girls club, they go and decide to trash this greenhouse that the babysitters club has been working on restoring so that they can use it as their new office. So they don't have to go to Claudia's house all the time. And so they, they shaving cream and toilet paper, the whole thing, which IRL there would have been smashed windows if, like if, that shit would have been destroyed irl i would have rolled up in my bike with my basket my <laughs> basket would have had some bricks would have had some mm-hmm. shit and yeah. we would have officially had to throw down because this shit is enough yep i would have called popo they should have gotten sent to juvie for destruction of public pro- property 100 yeah. percent. that's their doc martens right there yeah so they had just poured some concrete and Koki and friends don't realize they step in the concrete. So they have to leave their shoes behind because they're stuck. Apparently it was slow dry until you step in it and then it becomes quick dry and you can't get out of it. And so <sighs> then the next day they show up and they're supposed to be meeting with the city council to see if they will approve the use of the greenhouse as their new babysitters club clubhouse and they show up and it's a disaster because koki and friends have tp'd it and then it says claudia used her new science knowledge to figure out that toilet paper works really well to clean off shaving cream i feel like that shaving cream would have taken the paint off of the windows probably yeah they get it all cleaned up in time for city council to come in and they're like, well, if you're a business, you can't use a public space to run a business. Which I feel like when they did the research to ask about this place, that would have been one of the things that they, they should have said in the first place. Yeah. So, so we'll ask backwards. And then they realized the greenhouse was really hot. So they, <laughs> well, and the guy, I, I literally wrote, now everyone pretend to be hot because it's like the girls are half-heartedly fanning their skirts. And the, the, the one guy just holds a handkerchief over one eye the whole time. <laughs> I'm like, what is happening? This is subpar acting in this scene. Yeah. And how did they get Ellen Burstyn to agree to this movie? Miss Haberman walks in and surprise, surprise, she's on the city council and she's like, whatever. They don't make that much money. Yeah. She actually goes to bat for them. Yeah. And she's like, they don't make that much money. Girls, how much money do you make? And they're like a hundred bucks or something like that. (laughs) Yes. This is the time Stacy, the treasurer decides to really go into their financials that they made like a hundred dollars after all the shit that they've paid for, for this big, brilliant idea that Christy had in the beginning of the summer. So yeah, this is when we realize maybe the girls are not too money business savvy at yeah. this point. And all the other girls are shocked. I'm like, do y'all just <laughs> spend money and not think about, oh, th- this is taken out of our bank account. Like, <laughs> I understand. So it's agreed upon that they're allowed to use the greenhouse as their clubhouse. And then they all decide as they're packing up Claudia's room and taking all of like the babysitter's club stuff out of it they're like wow this room sure is cool like temperature wise (laughs) and you do have really good snacks and we've been here forever I'm like how y'all formed it when you were 13 you've been in that room less than a year (laughs) um and so they decide to gift it to Miss Haberman as kind of a, we're sorry for fucking with you all summer inadvertently. And if I were her, I would have been like, I don't want a full ass garden house to have to take care of and maintain on top of my garden at home. That's a lot of work. 
unless she just moved everything from her garden into the greenhouse. Yeah. Mm. And Don and Miss Haberman had bonded over the fact that they really love hummingbirds and butterflies. Mm -hmm. And so Don says, here is this greenhouse. So you can have your hummingbirds and butterflies. Bitch, how are they going to get in? She will have less hummingbirds and butterflies if all the plants are in an enclosed space. Maybe the door will be open. That's not how green houses work, Danielle. <laughs> no, I was trying to be optimistic. <laughs> Unless you have a whole butterfly world situation where you just <laughs> contain them, but then now you are responsible for the lives of butterflies and hummingbirds. I Maybe mean, they will. They, they'll. She'll put some flowers outside, Maybe. like around as well. I we put too much thought into this fucking greenhouse. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Anywho, but. then we have to quickly wrap it up. <laughs> and so they play a celebratory kickball game, but it's not kickball. It's baseball with a kickball and a shovel as a bat. Mm. And Jackie Radowski finally it's hits a home, home run. run. Oh, well, another one that Christy can see because he did it already and she missed yeah. it. And that shit hits Cokie Roberts right out of a tree. Because she is a stalker bitch. She is a stalker. She's always in a tree. <laughs> but let's not forget that the scene where Luca's leaving to go home. Oh, yes. Since he's now been put on the pedophile list. So he's got to be deported back to his country. <laughs> That's how I envision this. Movie you happening. interpreted that scene. <laughs> yes. Because she says she's sorry and they're saying their goodbyes, but he pretty much says that they'll keep in touch or whatever and she's like yeah and, and next year i'll be 14 and he goes i know and he kisses her jesus and he'll Take be a real adult yes she'll be 14 and you will be legally an adult 18 <laughs> years old i cannot tell you how disgusted <laughs> that made me and you know Poor young Danielle was fucking stupid because I love them as a couple. I was like, oh, damn, he's going back home. This is and how they groom us. <laughs> Seriously, one, this is how they groom us. One of the last scenes is all the kids super excited because everything worked out. And you can tell the director told all those children, just keep smiling because they're all just like <laughs> clapping and smiling for an extended amount of time while Christy's monologue is going on. And then she says something about her mom saying that if you can count the number of friends on one hand, consider yourself lucky. I don't know, something like that. Okay. Like true friends. Uh huh. And Christy says, I've got five fingers. And more than five friends. So I'm really lucky. You only have five fingers? On but one she, hand. Oh, okay. I was like, Chrissy, what happened? <laughs> and I was like, there was no one that sat, said, can we rewrite this and have something more motivational and uplifting than I have five fingers and more than five friends. Jackie, they had a rubric, uh, uh, they had a, a, an entire timeline and source material that was perfection to yes. choose from. They decided to include bad scripts, storylines that had no logic whatsoever. The, as you could see, all of the different uh, direction and special effects that were fucked up did you and, and they had damn near pedophilia in there <laughs> did you think they were gonna say you know what let's fix this line i guess they, they were going all the way which this should show <laughs> so the it says the film includes commingled parts of babysitters club books number 45 christy and the baby parade number 86, Marianne and Camp BSC, and Christie's book, none of which were actually written by Anne M. Martin. Well, 
it shows. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there's the baby series club. <laughs> um, Danielle, yes. What would current day Danielle rate this movie? <laughs> you know. I thought the nostalgia would just crawl up and bite me in the ass, but it, it, I can definitely release myself from that and say, this was a same day rental. This was a same day rental. This was a same day rental for me. <laughs> I could probably forgive a lot of stuff that happened if the acting hadn't been so awful. It just kept taking me out of it. <laughs> I just I couldn't I couldn't even so I agree it is a same day rental for me I'll go and I'll watch the new series but which cinematically it's all sorts of messed up because she shows up to the amusement park it's dark outside she gets into the amusement park and it's back light outside <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she's like in a time warp I don't know it's bizarre anywho if I don't ever have to watch this movie again I'm good with that and this is coming from someone who (laughs) went to Alamo Draft House to see this movie and sit through a live Q&A with the entire cast was it every like all the babysitters club was there yeah like even Claudia I can't remember if Claudia was there. I would have to look it up to see exactly who was there. But I know Skylar Fisk, Rachel Lee Cook, Larissa Olenek, Brie Blair. I'm not sure if Zelda Harris was there. Marla Salkloff was there. And then the director was there. Okay. So it was a good majority of the ensemble cast. Yeah. And that was an awesome time. I really, really enjoyed that. And that w- had been the first time they had gotten together. I guess it was their 20 year anniversary, which mm-hmm. makes sense. So that was the first time they had all gotten together since the release of the Babysitter's Club movie. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I was pretty invested my yeah. whole life. And it's just really unfortunate that this movie came out of the books and I I don't think the cast was bad I think everyone was casted well it was just I feel like they were very early into their careers and not seasoned actors with with the exception of a few and and just the timing and the delivery of their lines left a lot to be desired (laughs) (laughs) yeah I mean but They could only do so much with what they were given. We've seen a lot of these girls in other films Mm -hmm. and they were- Are great. Yeah. Yeah. So I I just think it's (laughs) it's the material. And it was very much, it's not even a teen movie. This is a kid's movie, a hundred percent. Well, it was an adventure, but it's definitely a summer movie. So glad we could add it to our summer series. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> and really cool that Natanya joined us earlier for an interview to kind of commemorate us doing this movie so absolutely she said she had a great time on the set with all the other kids so well we did it I just know that I really love this movie when I was younger and I just oh man <laughs> man oh man it's what you don't know but to all of our listeners let us know what would your rating be for the Babysitter's Club if you've seen it recently. I feel like a lot of people rewatched it during the pandemic because the new Netflix show came out. Yes. Yeah. Tweet us, message us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, all of our spots, YouTube at No More Late Fees, or you can hit up the quick drop <laughs> at 909-601-NMLF, 909-601-6653. If you have any suggestions, input, corrections, stories about your time working at a video store, and you may be featured on a future episode. Yeah. I do remember renting this a lot from Blockbuster when we were, when we were there. I, I did very much like this movie so, at the time. So, And stay tuned for next week's episode. We will be doing The Princess Diaries. Oh, so excited. 
Yes, we will be joining Princess Mia and the crew because it is going to be their 20th anniversary. So we're super excited about that. All right. Well, you know the drill. Until next time, be kind and rewind. (laughs) 